So I designed a printed circuit board. I sent it off to a fab in China to make. I got back the package and they sent me a bunch of these boards. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put all the pieces onto the board. I'm gonna demonstrate how to do that using a solder mask, uh, using solder paste and hot air. The first thing we need is a couple pieces of paper. And what I wanna do is make sure I get this nice and tight so it's not gonna go anywhere. I actually like the white paper because if I accidentally drop a component on the white paper, I'll be able to see exactly where it is. You might think you want to use newsprint or something like that, but if you drop something on it, you'd never find it again. And this is the lucky board. I'm going to put it right there. Okay, now ideally what I'd like to do is tape this down, but I don't want to do that because the tape might damage the board. This is from an old project that I'm not doing anymore, and what I'm essentially going to do is build something to hold this in place. and I'll tape down all of those pieces. And like I said, these other boards are from an old project that I'm not doing anymore. I don't need these boards, so I don't care if there's tape on them because they're, they're just not good for anything right now. I ordered this thing at the same time I ordered the board, and this thing is just massive. It's, I don't know if you can see just how big this is, but this is probably two feet by three feet. It's just, oh, here it even says it's 37 by 47 centimeters. These holes in it should match the holes on my board. So okay, I, I, don't, I don't have a good way to do that, but what I did is I lined them up and you can see that, I hope this comes out in the video, if I move it over just a little bit, you can see there's kind of green circuit board, but if I get them lined up just right, then what's showing through is exactly the right places where there is, where there are solder pads. All right, and next we've got my package from Adafruit. This has solder paste in it. All right, so this has low temperature maker paste. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna squirt down some of this kind of out of the way. I'm not sure how much I need. I think that's enough. You know what, I'm gonna put just a little more just in case. So now next, I have razor blades. I forget where I got these, maybe Home Depot someplace like that. I'm gonna get one of those out. So you can see like this is just a razor blade or if I was a Klingon, I could pretend it was a Bach Leth. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use that to scrape so it goes flat into the things. And I'm gonna put some pressure on this just to hold it down. very very carefully here and it looks like all the different holes are full of solder paste. If you look at these you can see that they're all over the place and that's because the stencil moved and the reason the stencil moved is because I put the tripod on it. So I'm gonna back up grab a different board and start that over. Okay, I don't love these. These are not perfect, but I'm going to go with it and we'll see how it works. In particular, I'm a little bit worried that I've got too much maker paste on on this chip here. Let's see, can we see that chip? That, that looks like maybe it's too much. Uh, it will probably go away when it melts, but we'll see. All right, I'm back. So now we're going to start populating things. I'm getting my needle nose tweezers out. 
I have a printed copy of the bomb and a pen because I'm going to make notes as we go if anything's wrong. I've swapped out the paper that was here because it had solder paste on it and I don't want that. And now I'm going to start populating. And so U1 and U2 are my chips. I'll start with those and then I'll do all the passives after that. a ceramic capacitor, 100 microfarads. If I pull up the bomb, 100 microfarads is C1. But let me show you how tiny this thing is when I pull it out of here. So these caps, the, the little gray part here is the positive side, so I double checked where that is on the schematic for both C2 and C18. Okay, so this is a diode, and it's going to matter which end is which. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my diode test. Cause so I this little guy right here is the diode. It's very hard to see. Let me put my diode check on my multimeter. And I hope this will show up. Okay, so this is the ground, and that's positive. This piece was C22 is a 10 microfarad, which is right here. You can see the one above it, C21, is also, but it's a do not populate. So what does that mean? Um, this particular circuitry has an amplifier in it, and if you populate that, it amplifies more. So I went ahead and laid it out on the board but I'm gonna try it with the one round of amplification and then I can tweak that and some of the other pieces if I need to. Okay, here's another piece. This is my fixed inductor 70 nano Henry. And when I first looked at this, I thought, oh, I don't have one, but it's over there. It's right in the corner. This piece is just really, really, really small. Um, it doesn't say the footprint on here, does it? I guess it's a 605, maybe? I'll look that up. But this one, you can see, you see how big the footprints were for the 0805s? This one's even smaller than that, so it's going to go there. It's hard to describe just how small this piece is.
because our next piece is this chip. Let's see, can I do that? And the top left is pin one. And it's probably hard to see, but there is a little dot right there on the chip that tells you that's pin one. Here's another inductor, also very small, not as small as the last one. thing is very very small okay that is the correct orientation so that the negative end goes to towards L2 like I have everything up here, I have everything around here, I have everything there, everything here, everything here. I'm missing R7 and R21, so no, R7 and C21. Those are my two do not populates. And then I've got everything here. Cool, cool. So everything is populated. And now it's time to get out the hot air station. This is the hot air station I use. You can see the make and model up at the front. This is kind of a low-end model that I got. I think I got it off of walmart.com. It was a couple hundred dollars. It was fairly cheap. If you're a professional engineer, it might not be the right thing for you. I'm not. I just do this as hobby work, and it's been fine for what I do. So it's got hot air, and it's got a soldering iron as well. So here's how this works. There's this section in the middle with the rails and those move and you can put a board in there and tighten it. So let me do that just to demonstrate. And then you can lock those down with the little screws and so to hold your board nice and tight. Underneath where the board would go, there's this area here, which is an IR heating plate. So you can turn that on and that will heat the board from the bottom. So it's not just the top that's getting heated with the hot air. It's the whole board is sort of warmed up to a base temperature. And over here, we've got the hot air gun. You probably can't see this very well, but we'll blow hot air directly on the thing. It's got the hot air. If I turn that on, there's a temperature setting. I'm going to turn that back off because it just makes noise, but you can set the temperature and there's also the pressure. So I can turn it way down to low air volume or to high air volume. There's a separate control for the plate. That's the part that goes under the board. I can turn that on and that's going to preheat. And then there's a control over here for the, uh, the soldering iron, but we're not going to use that in this video. And what I'm going to do just for now is I'm going to put the, the first board in that I kind of messed up. Okay, you can see the solder's kind of a mess on this one. All right, so I've got it in place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to preheat the plate. 
Now I'm going to turn on the hot air gun. And it doesn't actually turn on until I pull it out of its holster. I'm going to start heating these things. I'm just going to move it around. And this thing gets really hot. I'm going to crank up the air pressure. It gets very, very hot. And pretty much nothing happens until the whole thing happens. There you go, you can see some of the solder melting. So I want to keep it moving. And you'll see the solder melt and kind of condense. That's what we're looking for. And we'll do that on the real board in a second. And that should just put all the pieces into place. And now I'm going to put hot air on it. I'm going to start just all over the board, but now I'm going to focus on these resistors and capacitors up at the top left. And in just a second, you'll be able to see the solder start melting and they float on very nicely. There it goes. Look at that. Now I'm going to move down just a little bit and get the capacitors and the chip. And then the row of passives below that. And then the rest just kind of going around any of the solder that hasn't melted yet I'm going to keep it heated until it melts and you can just see how it flows and I'm going over everything one last time just to make sure it's all clean And I think we're just about done now. So that's how you do it. The board looks pretty good to me. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe.